Hey all, Lawrence here from Lawrence Creates. Um, I know it's been a while. It's uh, been pretty much a year now since my last video. Um, and now some of you may have noticed from my uh, Discord announcement not too long ago that I have rebranded from Express Unity to Lawrence Creates. And that's simply because I want to kind of cover basically game development in general, not just specifically the Unity engine, though the Unity engine is what I'm going to focus on mainly. Um, but I'm going to start leaning away from the very large tutorials that a lot of you are used to, uh, my 10-15 series tutorials. Um, they just get a little bit too much for me to handle on top of all the current workload that I have. So I'm going to just stick it to just basically one episode videos covering something um, and then I will also be doing a lot more development logs on some games, some personal projects that I'm, I'm working on. Um, so look out for a, a devlog sometime soon with a new Steam release that I'll be releasing hopefully before Christmas. Um, so yeah, basically uh, in this video I'm going to talk about the audio spectrum and getting uh, your audio spectrum can kind of help you make like a rhythm game. Um, uh, ga any, basically anything rhythmic related um, maybe you just want to have like a, a, an audio visualizer with particle effects and something something like that so this should help hopefully get you going in the right direction so I kind of just preloaded a few things into this scene um, so first off I have my song um, so I'll just put that in the scene and we can loop that uh, next we're just going to put a cube in the scene just so we have something to represent our audio really quickly like so. And now we want our script. So I might just call this um, uh, Spectrum. I don't think that should... I think that should work. I don't think there's any classes called Spectrum in Unity, so that should be fine. Alrighty, so... The first thing we need in this script is going to be a float array. We're going to call this spectrum. Um, and this is going to be a, of array size 256. Um, now this is basically where all of our spectrum data is going to be saved. Um, so next thing we want is to basically hook into our audio listener here and this has a handy little function called get spectrum data. So anything your camera audio uh, listener has uh, being sent to it, it basically goes to this function here. So it wants a float array and we're just going to give it, oops, we're just going to give it our uh, a spectrum. It wants a channel. Um, we're just going to default to, to zero and we don't really need to uh, work on anything other than zero right now because this is a small project. And then our FFT window, I usually keep it to rectangular but um, you can mess around with it. Um, alrighty, so next thing is we want to loop over our data. So we do this by saying for in i equals zero, i is less than spectrum dot length, and then we just increment i. And that is essentially it. We now have our spectrum data. So if we debug.log this and we print out spectrum i, you can see that once it compiles, we'll, we'll drag this script onto our cube as well because we actually want to manipulate the cube's movement based on the audio. You can see that once we play and our song was up, actually, I'm, yeah, that's a bit too loud. Let me just turn down the sound of Unity there. Uh, turn down the sound of this here as well. Alright, so if we play that. I gotta hit. Hopefully that's not too loud. But you can see that Unity is printing out some, uh, some numbers here for our spectrum. Alright, so we can actually use these numbers now for uh, for our script. So um, 
I'm going to actually lower the volume a bit because that was still kind of loud. Uh, okay. So what we can do here, just, just to kind of uh, start it up, get something basic happening, is we want to make it easier to work with our spectrum because it does print out some low values. Uh, so let's create a new float. Uh, we can call it temp. This is going to be equal to our current spectrum data, whatever value that is, and we might just times it by three. And then we can just print out what our temp value is. Now what we're going to do is, we can say if temp uh, is greater than or equal to, let's just say, what do we want here? We'll just say two. Then game object dot transform dot rotation. This can be equal to quaternium dot bula, and we're just going to get a random range from zero to three sixty, and copy and paste this for the y and the z. Now, what's this? What this is going to do is every time this temp value is uh, greater than or equal to two, it's just going to randomly rotate, select a new rotation for our cube. Now, ideally, you'd want to lerp over this, but just for example's sake. Um, we're just going to do this for now, and hopefully that is the correct value to kind of get the, the base of the track. So every time there's some heavy base, hopefully the cube rotates. So... That might be a little bit too high, let's see here, so... Want... Temp I, yes, it's all good. It might just be let's just do it by maybe 1.5, we'll lower it a bit and see how that does for us. You can see here that the values are pretty small, and I actually, f I actually believe it's gotten lower because I've just change the volume on the audio source. So you might want to keep note of the volume as well. I gotta hit the beat. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's definitely because I've changed the volume. So, might actually need to bump this up to 30 or so. Um, <clears throat> maybe even 100. Uh, because the volume is lower, it is giving us a lower spectrum. Um, so let's see here. Alright, so it is working. It It's kind of detecting a little too much. So let's maybe ramp it up to three because we really just want to narrow it down uh, to the base in this example. Um, now you can make multiple if statements um, and kind of try and get different parts of the song volume. Like uh, maybe there'll be a specific value for when the voice comes out or when the, the bass comes out. Um, so you kind of just need to play with it a little bit. So we'll try running this again, we'll see if this is... Perfect, alright, so that's a little bit more narrowed down to, to the bassy parts of the song. But uh, I mean, that's, that's pretty much it. Um, that is more or less how you kind of get the, uh, the spectrum data for any sort of audio that's playing in your game, do take note that it, it does matter if your volume is lower. So you might want to do a little bit of math to kind of readjust all of this um, based on the volume of your audio source. Um, but yeah, I am going to leave it there and I will just put an example of just something a little bit more spicier uh, of what I'd do with this. So uh, thanks for watching the very first video uh, that I've done in a year. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Um, there is going to be a devlog after this, maybe in a week or so, maybe a little less. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys have a great day, and I'll see you in the next video. I gotta hit the beat. I gotta hit the beat, beat. I gotta hit the beat. I gotta hit the beat, beat.